You see that uh, it's like our political parties. Okay. Uh, one of the parties here, uh, the religious side is, pr is promoting, I don't want to say they're promoting racism or, 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 or racial value or, or um, divisiveness. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, you know, you're taught that the Bible preaches one thing, but through misinterpretations, mm -hmm. uh, misrepresentations, uh, uh, finding certain parts of scriptures that uh, <coughs> um, mean certain things, are taken out of context. Mm -hmm. I mean, people, what, what I'm saying is, a lot of the biblically literate play games and manipulate the minds of people. So how how do you get the point across to people who do want guidance and they do want to be led to let them know to make sure that they're, that they're beware of people. Mani uh, manipulating. Yes. Okay. Uh, uh, it's pretty simple. The Bible says, study to show thyself approved, a workman that needeth not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. So if you study the word of God yourself, if I know what the word of God says, then you can't come tell me that it says something else. I think we need to be noble-minded like the Bereans. They went home after they heard a teaching or whatever. They went home and studied the scripture to see if it was so. So it, here, here, herein lies responsibility on the individual to do the homework. So the, if the individual doesn't do the homework, he will stay stupid and be easily manipulated and misled. Well, if you don't know, you know, <laughs> if you don't have any knowledge or and or understanding of uh, the Bible or, or spiritual principles, uh, if, if anybody could tell you, yeah, let me give you a perfect example. You know, uh, it, this, it has been said that uh, godliness is next to cleanliness. That's not in the Bible. My grandmother said that. Probably your grandmother said that. Said it was in the Bible. It's not. And uh, another example, um, um, there was a man who was in the um, um, graveyard, and he was demon-possessed. And Jesus came there, and he delivered the man, cast the demon spirits out of him. And the Bible says that the, all the people in the city ran in, came back, seen the man, he was naked out there, and he was crazy. And he came back, seen the man sitting, this is what the text says, sitting, clothed, and in his right mind. That's where we get the statement a lot of people say, Christians say, he was, I'm, I'm clothed in my right mind. No, he was sitting, clothed, and in his right mind. You follow what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So like, it's like you're t saying, it's, it's taking stuff out of context. Okay, so... All right, I'll have more questions about that, but all right now, you know, in, in your uh, uh, seven days, and then yeah, in the seven uh, days of restoration, mm -hmm. that uh, just from the uh, from when I first heard the term, it sounded like not only is it um, faith oriented, mm -hmm. but there's action and doing things behind it, mm -hmm. and do you always have to have have uh, intellectual teaching plus some type of action? And, and, and why is that, uh, it seems like that there has to be a mix there. It, it does. Uh, everything's in the Word of God. The Bible says, be not hearers of the Word, but doers also. So it's not, not just hearing the Word, that you need to take the Word and apply it. The Bible teaches that we should heed the Word, or hearken to the Word. That means listen with the intent to do. And so Jesus, on the Great Commission, he says, go ye and make disciples of all nations. That's the commission that he gave the church after he left. Well, that, that means doing something. To go means to proceed along or take a certain line of course of action. That means you, there's some action that go, comes behind. And in seven days over the years, we've done several things. You know, we brung um, a Christian rapper down here at, uh, oh, what is it, uh, is Headwater Park. Mm -hmm. And we rented that and uh, brought a nationally known Christian rapper here. Had about, probably about five, 600 youth coming in and out, gave away free food free hot dogs, pop, potato chips, to do outreach in the community. One of the things that I strongly believe is that the church needs to go out in the community and minister and give something back to the community. And so I, I, I think uh, I, I'm in total agreement with you. It's, it's more than just praying. It's more than just being taught. Um, we need to do what uh, we're taught and make an effort to make other disciples for Christ. So as you look through these seven days, how are these days structured? The days are structured like this. Uh, it starts August the 2nd. It's always the first full week of August. It starts August the 2nd. We do three, this year, we're doing three 
a uniting fellowship services. And I say uniting because we're really not united. We're working on it. We're doing something. Uniting fellowship services. And in those services, we'll have uh, speakers, local speakers here. Uh, on the first night, Monty Sheets will be ministering. He's a white brother, friend of mine. And then on the second night, we'll have another uniting fellowship service, Pastor Mario Valdez, a Hispanic brother, friend of mine. On the third night, Bishop Clark, uh, Jimmy Clark, will be ministering. And then that's the first three nights. And then on Thursday, we're going to do a men's uh, fellowship called Divine Recall. In other words, like I was telling you in Genesis chapter 1, verse 26 and 27, um, God is calling us back to the image and the likeness in which he made us. That's why Jesus came. And so we're doing like a divine recall to call men back to their original purpose, the intent that God made them. And so we're doing a men's fellowship. Then on Friday night, we're going to do a youth thing. We always do something with the youth, like the concert we had downtown. I've done that several places out at Frankie Park, different places over the years. We have do something with the youth. This one is called Rise Up. Um, uh, I got a youth minister in our church. They're partnering with other youth ministers at other churches, the Yule Wilson Center, and uh, just bringing youth and ministering to youth at their point of need, have breakout sessions. Same way with the men's fellowship. We're going to have breakout sessions dealing with certain subjects that are pertinent to men and certain subjects pertinent to children. And then on Saturday, we're doing a Christian fellowship basketball game. It's going to be at Indiana Tech uh, uh, gym. Uh, it's pastors and ministers playing against deacons and laity in the church. That's the main game. But before we do that, we bring youth in like Fort Wayne All-Stars, and I just call them hoopsters, the other team. And we so Fort Wayne All-Stars, and we have a preliminary game with those guys. Then we have a main game with the pastors. And, and the reason we do that is to show the world that Christianity is not boring. It's not dull. The only thing, we, we don't just go eat all the time. We have things to do. We bowl. We fish. We play golf. We, you know, it's not boring being a Christian. It's an exciting lifestyle. Um, and then on Sunday night, uh, we'll close out with a uh, citywide United Fellowship service. And uh, Dr. Helen Underwood is a member of my church and uh, of the church I pastor, and she'll be ministering the Word of God. Will you have female basketball players there too? I haven't seen any females that ask to play. <laughs> so, I, I, you know, no, I don't think so. I'll have some cheerleaders. <laughs> you know, a, a, as you... Uh, engage in with the community hmm. and you know when you take a step back and you see all the difficulties that the school system is going through hmm. and it looks as though the community is going to have to start to rally and pick up a lot of educational slack you know educational uh, almost in all types of, of regards because the schools are showing not just here but across the country that they can only go so far hmm. and uh, uh, are more churches, churches having their own schools, or how are you uh, putting in these kids' minds uh, what, how they have to become more, uh, they have to do more on their own to understand how the world works and to fill their minds full of knowledge? Education in America is a serious issue right now because government is always seems to cut in the area of education, firing, pass, firing teachers and here, fired everybody, rehiring them, that kind of thing. And and what we need to understand is we got our values all mixed up, and I think it's because we're away from the manual. We got our values mixed up. We play basketball players, millions of dollars, to dribble a ball down the court and make hoops. We pay teachers just basic salaries, you know, and they're the most important people in our community. I think that teachers ought to be paid uh, greater salaries, but I also think they ought to do their job. They ought to make sure that those children are getting a quality education, graduating, and um, funneling them into various colleges. I believe that ought to happen. But again, it, all that takes money. And I think in America, in general, we need to quit cutting the educational budget and find other areas where we can cut, like bonuses for politicians <laughs> to travel all over the country and with, uh, you know, and basically have every, anything and, and everything they want. 